I'm going to be introducing causal loop diagrams. In system dynamics, we use the informal maps and formal models of computer simulation to understand endogenous sources of system behavior. By endogenous, we generally mean the feedback loops that are generating the behavior. There are two types of conventions we use to represent systems. One is a causal loop diagram, and the other is a stock and flow diagram. The causal loop diagram on the left was drawn by participants in a workshop about what it takes to raise a child in St. Louis. And the one on the right is a stock and flow diagram representing expectant mothers and decisions about delivery. This was drawn by participants in a workshop involving healthcare leaders from Honduras. Today we'll just be focusing on how to draw causal loop diagrams. The way we'll introduce this today is that there are three general steps to drawing a causal loop diagram. First is really to tell or identify the story. What is the situation you're trying to describe? The second step is to identify the dynamic problem or reference mode. This is what we're going to focus our modeling on. The third is to draw a cause loop diagram of the system. This is how we think the system might be generating the particular problem or issue, and also the diagram that we can use to start thinking about solutions. The combination of the reference mode and the cause loop diagram is a dynamic hypothesis. The hypothesis being that the cause loop diagram that we have drawn can explain the patterns of interest in a reference mode. Next, we'll do a chicken and egg exercise to illustrate how we draw cause loop diagrams. So the first part is to tell the story. I'm gonna do this using pictures. So the story of the chicken and the eggs is that we have uh, some chickens and they're producing some eggs and there's more chickens as eggs hatch and even more eggs and more chickens. But eventually the chickens are getting congested, starting getting a bit stressed, so they begin to cross the road. This is a busy road. So there are cars that are driving And unfortunately, um, as there are more chickens and more eggs and more chickens trying to get to the other side, we'll have some chicken injuries. Now the second step is to take that story and represent it as a dynamic problem. And there you have to think about one or two variables to start out with. And we're going to be thinking about these variables as things that are changing over time. So the first variable I want to be thinking about is uh, the actual number of chickens. And I'm going to think about this over the order of 0 to 24 months. For reference modes, we'll always have time on, on the horizontal axis. And then the number of chickens on the vertical axis. So we're going to see 0 to 100. And initially in my story, the number of chickens is increasing as there are more eggs, but eventually it sort of plateaus. And this is my feared situation. Sometimes we might also call it business as usual or BAU. What I really want to have happen is for the number of chickens to continue to increase. So this could be my hope for a scenario. Now the second part of the story I want to think about also in terms of over months. But these are the number of chicken injuries. And again, so maybe 0 to 10, let's say, injuries per month. And here they are increasing, and then they're plateauing. And this is also my feared scenario. What I really want to have happen is for these to decrease. So my hope is to reduce the number of chicken injuries. And this is a reference mode. It's a formal statement of the dynamics of the patterns over time that I'm trying to understand and change. And I can 
I know I have a dynamic problem if I can describe my problem in these terms and if there's a difference basically between my hoped and my feared scenario. Now the next step is to be thinking about what's the causal what's the causal system, the feedback system that's generating this pattern of behavior. So I'm going to start by putting one of the main variables, uh, chickens. And, and part of the story is that as we have more chickens, we have more eggs. So I'm going to draw a causal link here. The arrow points in the direction of causality. So more chickens leads to more eggs in this case, or fewer chickens leads to fewer eggs. And whenever things move in the same direction, either increasing or decreasing, we'll put a plus sign. So plus and minus doesn't mean good or bad. It just means plus means things move in the same direction. So if I have an increase in the number of chickens, I'll have an increase in the number of eggs. Or conversely, if I have a decrease in the number of chickens, I'll have a decrease in the number of eggs. Now, as we have more eggs, we also have more chickens. And since more eggs leads to more chickens, this is a plus sign. Now, as soon as we have eggs, we don't have chickens that produce more eggs. So we'll want to pay attention to that and reflect the delay. Delays are represented by double lines. So this says that as we have more eggs, there'll be a delayed effect of having more chickens that produce more eggs. Now, this is our first feedback loop. An increase in the number of chickens. This is a plus sign, so we have more eggs. An increase in the eggs, this is a plus sign, so we end up with even more chickens. Because we started with an increase and we ended with an increase, this is a reinforcing loop. It's reinforcing the direction of change. So we're going to label this using an R. And we're, the symbol here will be the arrow, circular arrow around the R indicating whether or not the loop is moving a clockwise or counterclockwise. In this case, it's a counterclockwise loop, an R1. And we'll give it a name. We'll call it the reproduction loop. Now, the other part of the story, the other part of the story is that as we had more chickens, we had more stress. So put a plus sign. More stress led to leads to more road crossings. More road crossings leads to more injuries. And more injuries reduces the number of chickens. So now this is going to be a minus sign. And this forms our second feedback loop. Now to see whether that's going to be a balancing or reinforcing loop, we first say, OK, let's say we had more chickens. The plus sign means we're going to have more stress. This is increasing, so more stress leads to more road crossings. More road crossings leads to more injuries. More injuries. This is a minus sign, so it decreases the number of chickens. Since we started with this increasing and now we move with this, end up with a decreasing, this is a balancing loop. It balances or counteracts that initial direction of change. So we're going to use a B symbol to indicate that this is a balancing loop. It's moving in the clockwise direction, so the arrow here moves in the clockwise, and we're going to give it a name, for example, injury loop. So now I have two feedback loops. I could have more links um, between any of the variables. I could add additional variables. This may be a pretty incomplete story. If I want to check whether these are balancing or reinforcing loops, there's a simple heuristic we can use. If we have an odd number of minus signs, that usually implies that it's a balancing loop. And if we have zero or even minus signs, that implies reinforcing. So if I go around and I count the number of minus signs in the reproduction loop, I see that there's zero minus signs, and so this checks with my statement that this is a reinforcing loop. 
If I go around the balancing loop, my injury loop, I see that there is one minus sign. And since there's one minus sign, this is a balancing loop. And this combination of my cause loop diagram with my reference mode, we call a dynamic hypothesis. If you want to get more practice, there's some things you can do next. You can take a news story and develop a dynamic hypothesis and then draw that out as a causal loop diagram. Also take a situation at home, doing dishes, laundry, anything, and develop a reference mode and map out the system using causal loop diagrams. If you want to get more into the software, IC Exchange has some resources and you can create a free account. From there, you can log in and create a causal loop diagram that you can copy and paste into a document. And lastly, visit IC System for free webinars to learn more about system dynamics, software, and modeling.